Hi guys, it's John here from Recyclops down in Cornwall. Just a short little video showing you what should have been a straightforward washing machine drum bearing replacement. Um, and sort of the underlying problem that appeared along the way that was the reason for the bearings getting filled up with water in the first place. So, short little video, might be interesting to some of you, hope it is. Please rate, comment, or subscribe at the end of the video. Have fun. Hello guys, it's Johnny down in uh, Cornwall from Recyclops again. Just a uh, little short video just to show the inside of the washing machine drum. Um, of course you've got the bearings to do on it. Uh, just had a fair bit of trouble getting the bearing out on this one. Um, this is from a Zanussi, an older style Zanussi washing machine. Fortunately uh, it's a screw together drum on it. A lot of the modern ones are all welded now, or plastic welded or glued, so you can't um, can't really take them apart. But the uh, the bearing, as you can see there, that's uh, that's what was causing the trouble. The bearing itself, or the main bearing, had collapsed. And you got this. Uh, I don't know if you can see that there. One of the bearings there is literally just half a bearing. And the race itself is split in two. And that should be like that. Really unusual. It was a bit of a pain in the ass to get out, but uh, we got there in the end. Obviously, the new bearings should uh, look like that. New bearings and seals. Quite an easy job to do, really. If you, well, you know, a couple of hours work, really, taking the machine apart and putting it back together but uh, obviously saves a lot of money if uh, if the drums do come apart and you can change the bearings when you need to makes life a lot easier also one other thing to check when you've got it apart check the heater elements make sure there's no corrosion on them um, test them with a meter because uh, if you're going to change one best time to do it obviously is when it's all apart and then clean the drum out, get rid of all the rust, just wipe it out and then when you put the machine back together run it on a hot wash and uh, I usually put some white wine vinegar in or something like that or you, know, you can buy, buy the cleaning agents to put in the machines um, but then run it through on a hot wash and you'd be surprised at how much crap comes out of it uh, this is the back side of the machine. Here's the, uh, the new bearing fitted in that. Um, I think there's only a seal for the inside of it actually. I think the reason there are two seals is that the bearings are the probably same size for different machines and you get a different different seal on a different machine. Um, neither of the seals fit this side, there's only one that fits the other side. So and I was just looking to make sure that there wasn't one when I took it apart um, and there wasn't one fitted there either when I took it apart so uh, just the one seal that were going on the other side will be the one that seals it and uh, there you can see with the uh, bearing in and seal, seal in place um, I did find one interesting thing <laughs> I was looking through all the rubble of the bearings which I wasn't expecting to find, which might explain why it was leaking in the first place. I'll uh, show you that in a second. Right, the reason that the uh, drum was leaking is this brass bush. You can see there's a split, split in that edge. Now this brass bush should mount on this spindle and sit right down round at the bottom and they're normally a tight press fit and then when this is obviously the the inner drum and when this pushes back into the bearings this seal that's the this is the inner seal that will fit into the other drum normally runs around that and that makes the seal now with that split there the water when it's in the drum can then leak through into the bearings which was undoubtedly what caused the problem so I'm going to have to sort that out but I'll, uh, I've got some silver solder so I'll silver solder it 
or braise it if you prefer um, and then that will stop any leaking any future leaking right this is my uh, make do brazing half just an angle iron frame um, a couple of fire bricks out of an old storage heater and uh, as you can see the bush is just clamped together I don't even see it there but there is flux in the joint um, so I'm going to silver solder it and then clean it up and then it should be good as new again then this is the uh, brass ring after it's been brazed up um, this back edge here that's where the joint is it's a little bit more just finishing off um, still slightly raised obviously if you had a lathe or something like that you just turn it out but uh, I haven't got one at the moment this moment in time so just finish it off by hand as you can see brazing it up silver solder whatever you like to call it um, you know, makes it like new in effect so hopefully that will stop any leaks that there were and should go on for another five or six years I should think right the uh, brass bush is now back on as you can see might be able to see steam smoke coming off there um, because it was brazed back together it obviously tightened it up and they must be a press fit on there in the first place so I actually had to put it on the shaft and then heat the bush up and as the heat as the bush got hotter so it expanded and then I was able to push it down the shaft so now that's cooling down I should let it cool down on its own um, and that will just be you know you wouldn't be able to get that back off that would be such a tight fit on there now which is how it should be but hopefully that will have resolved the problem and it should have stopped the leak right so we're at the last last stage here of getting this in as you can see the shafts almost through um, it's sort of getting onto the bearing surfaces now so you have to wiggle it about to get it down I and mean, sometimes if it's a bit tight because um, I put heat on the shaft as well it's probably you know just just makes it a little bit tighter so I'm going to use the nut that holds the pulley on the back with a big washer and then just a socket and uh, tighten it up and that should pull it down onto the shaft I could hit it with a mallet something like that but with this uh, sort of ABS plastic um, although it's very strong you only got to hit it slightly wrong and then you end up cracking the whole drum so I should just tighten it down right then this is the drum back together as you can see it's uh, turns freely now there was a lot of wobble on it before you can hear that squeaking that's the uh, rubber seal running around the brass bush at the moment hopefully when it's all back together and it's been run through a cycle that won't squeak so much because if it does it's going to be bloody annoying <laughs> but, uh, I think there won't be a problem with that by the time it's all back together anyway it'll deaden some of the sound out so uh, anyway that was how what should have been a straightforward bearing change resulted in a bit of a pain in the arse job to sort out but hopefully now that would have stopped the leak and there won't be any more problems now it's just a case of putting it back together worth putting a smear of uh, silicon around here before we put the seal in just to make sure that the drum does seal when it goes back together and then we've got the cabinet over there that it's got to go into so that'll be the next step but I'm sure we've seen loads of videos of that on YouTube and uh, anyway hope you enjoyed please uh, rate comment or subscribe thank you very much